Here's your call. Does it matter what you think? Your beliefs? If you foster? A report on why three European, Eastern European children were removed from foster parents because they're members of UKIP uh, should have just hit the desk of the leader of Rotherham Borough Council. Over the weekend, the council's director of children's services, Joyce Thacker, explained the decision. These children are from EU migrant backgrounds. UKIP has very clear statements on ending multiculturalism, not having that going forward. And I have to think about how sensitive am I being to the needs of those children. Well, uh, Boris Johnson is one of those who's not impressed. I think it's totally balmy, absolutely bonkers. I think the poor couple deserve to have their charges restored from ASAP. I think the story is complete nonsense on stilts and political correctness gone round the bend. When it comes to fostering, is it better to be safe than sorry? Should the beliefs of some people pre prevent them from looking after children or is providing a safe and stable home the only thing that counts? Does it matter what you think if you foster? 0500 909 693. Good morning. Does it matter what you think if you foster? You know about this row over the, uh, the, 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 the couple who are members of UKIP and their, their children of uh, Eastern European origin who have been taken out of the situation at six minutes past nine o'clock. We asked this question this morning. Where do, we, where do we draw the line? It's one of those. Janet Folds is from the former chairwoman, in fact, of the British Association of Social Workers. Hello, Janet. Hello, Nikki. And uh, Tim Lawton's with us as well, who is a Conservative MP, former Children's Minister. Hello to you. Morning, Nikki. What was your uh, reaction when you heard this news, Tim Lawton? I was horrified. I think it sounds pretty, uh, pretty bonkers and politically crept. It's gone mad, as I, as I said. And what worries me in all of this, it's become rather political football. The most important thing is what is best for those, uh, for those children. Mm. And why on earth were they taken away from foster parents who appear to be doing a pretty good job on the mm. face of it? You, is there any sort of belief system that would trouble you when it comes to uh, foster children, then? Well, if they children are being placed with parents who clearly have got very damaging views that they're trying to impose on, uh, on, on children, then that's another matter. There's absolutely no suggestion in this case that those foster parents have done anything other so than a pretty good job looking after these children. Trying to impose is the key phrase there. I mean, you can, so you can have BNP foster parents or whatever, or, you know, as you said earlier on, uh, you know, any sort of religious cult or young earth creationists or whatever, so long as they don't impose the views on the children. Is that the key for you? They well, no, I, what I don't think we should have is a blanket ban. And every case mm. should be judged on its own merits. Obviously, when prospective foster carers or adoptive parents come to be um, assessed, then they must be able to show that they can provide a good, safe, stable, loving home for those children first and foremost. If they, are, they have some very strong views on certain things that could be shown to be detrimental to that, to, to that child, if they had some extreme racist uh, views that they might poison the, the child with, obviously that would be a concern and that needs to be taken into consideration. But there's absolutely no suggestion here that that was the case with these parents. And just having a, a blanket consideration about UKIP's views on multiculturalism, whatever that, that amounts to, must be absolutely wrong. It's what is best for the children in this case. And we get into a massive debate about what is multiculturalism, what is the definition of it. There are, there are, there are a few definitions. Janet Folds, what do you think? Well, I, I agree with uh, much of what uh, Tim Lawton has just said. Um, our overriding consideration at all times as social workers must be, can this couple meet the needs of the children who are going to be placed with them? And what they do think does matter. Of course it matters. But I've never heard of a case where belonging to a political party just disbarred people from fostering. I mean, we've got foster parents, wonderful foster parents, and we need a lot more of them from all kinds of backgrounds, all kinds of different political persuasions. The issue is, can they meet the needs of the children without um, imposing, I think imposing is a good word, um, views that are going to be harmful because the children when they come into care have had difficult times already and they need to be going into a situation where they can have good care they don't need more difficulties they don't need indoctrination no they don't no so yes you would it's the type of people that you are if you're the type of person who doesn't indoctrinate and doesn't impose your views you can be of any political religious persuasion whatever and you should be able to be qualified to to foster children is is that the bottom line is... Yeah, I mean, I, I think if, if you may have one religious faith, but the children being placed have a different one. And I think what social workers would hope for is that those people would be able to be sensitive to the needs and promote the 
religion or the faith of the children placed with them and do their very best to, to give them a good family life. That's yeah, what we want. Religion, do children have a religion? Well... Some children may have a religion, and I think you know that, that's just one element. It's another debate, isn't it? Uh, yeah, they may have political views as well. <laughs> well, well uh, Nick's in Manchester. Amy's in Manchester. Amy, good morning to you. What do you want to say? Good morning. How are you? Fine. Um, yeah, I was listening to it yesterday and also this morning, and. I'm just sick and tired of listening to politician or political parties hijacking um, oh. issues in the media for their own uh, gain. Um, oh. This is a story of a family, and right now we'll, we have to look at the welfare of the children full stop. And if the judicial <coughs> system have decided that the children um, need to go somewhere else, then we should follow the law. And, and I was listening to the social service lady yesterday. She answered the right way she took legal advice on it and probably the family of the children didn't want their children to be placed there and this is it and it's uh, it's nothing to do with UK being racist or a party or um, it has it is it has very strong values against uh, um, uh, immigration um, well. some people feel that way but they also have good views about controlling migration I think it is the same views of all parties but I just don't want to see politicians or politic parties hijacking. This is the welfare of the children, full stop. We should think about what the children needs are. And we shouldn't drag this into making it a big thing and things like that. Now, Jan Janet Folds, can you understand what might have been behind this decision or any s similar decision? No, I'm cautious about com um, commenting on that particular case because I genuinely don't know. But I think your last caller has a point, really. Uh, because there is damage done by um, letting the public or making the public think that this is social workers just gone mad or a politically correct decision. We don't know the whole story and they don't know the whole story. And I think it's important that well, every, uh, every case is looked at on its merits because, you know, the, the myths that are put forward about social workers reach children too. And, yes. you know, that's, that isn't a good uh, thing to Amy, do. Amy, go on. Hmm. Go on, I thought you were going to come back there, Amy. Joyce Thacker, Janet yeah. Folds. Okay, hang on a second. Joyce Thacker, Janet Folds. Can this, I come back? You can in a second. Joyce Thacker, Janet Folds, said that it was concerns over the policy of multiculturalism, given that these children f were from, from Eastern Europe. Is that a genuine concern, Janet? I, I'd still prefer to say that social workers should look at each family mm. on their merit and look at whether they can meet the needs of the children. And, of course, their views about different things will be taken into account when they're vetted and um, assessed. But, you know, we've got to have common sense and we've got to have the children at the centre. And I, I, I think it's difficult, you know, it isn't right to have do a blanket. You, do you have every confidence that, this, that, that, that the same caution will be applied were this family to be expressing views from the, from, from the extreme left? I don't think it is about a political uh, football Well, clearly it is, argument. because that's what this woman, Joyce Thacker, well, was saying. maybe, but mm. there may be other issues. I don't know. Okay. I, I just think but. that everybody's entitled to have their political views, and if we disbarred everybody who belonged to a political party, we probably wouldn't have any <laughs> any foster parents well, this at is all. The, Tim Lawton, this is the problem, isn't it? Yeah, and, and what I'm really worried about all, all, all this, and your caller goes on about political football and that say happens as a by-election this week and it has been used by people who've never said anything about child protection before. What I'm really concerned about is what happens after by-election on Thursday. Let's stay away from the by-election. Uh, say again? <laughs> Let's stay away from the by-election. By Actually, but what happens after Thursday is that Rotherham needs to assure everybody that it's looking after its vulnerable children and families in the very best interest of those vulnerable children and families and haven't got some other agenda. And the government for the last couple of years has had a very important agenda, it's politics, we like it or not, of trying to get a better deal for children in care, whether they're staying in care, long-term foster care or whatever, or being adopted. And one of the biggest problems that I came um, across was uh, the whole issue, which I call political correctness, around ethnic matching, that you have to have an almost perfectly matched uh, adoptive uh, set of parents to look after that particular... There are very child. good outcomes if you do have a match. 
Well, it depends. I mean, if you can find a perfect e ethnic match, then great, that's a bit of a bonus. But in most cases, you can't. But if, and if you can't, don't hang around forever waiting oh, well, for Well, what's one. the most important thing is to find a safe, stable, loving environment for that, uh, that child. And if it means that child may stay in care and be bounced around from one place to another for many more years, that's not a good thing. And the really damaging thing about this this week, politics aside, is that it sends out a bit of a message that actually if you have some political corrections, then you may not be considered to be a suitable foster care or adoptive parent. Go on, Amy. And there's so many myths no, around already. I, I, yeah, I, you know, I disagree with that because, you know, the thing is um, there are some views of political correctness which have gone crazy but there are certain issue, things like that, I believe, because most of the, the problem is in the in the social in the foster care system, we do not have a lot of ethnic minority foster parents coming forward. Mm -hmm. So there's a sh shortage of that, and um, so that is one of the things social service to to look into. But me, I'm an ethnic minority. I wouldn't mind my children going anywhere, even to a gay family, because that is my view. But there are some who feel that they are they they want their children like this Eastern European. They want their children to be brought up in a Catholic family. They want their children to be eating their kind of food. They want their children to be speaking their language. And I don't think there's some, anything wrong with it. This is a free UK, full stop. You know, um, um, having this polit uh, politics drug into issues like that, it is not fair. Uh, and um, well, uh, uh, exactly Mike, Hang on, one second. Mike, Mike in Liverpool, what do you think? Um, my thought on this is um, there are people who exist who believe that white people are, you know, the master race or whatever, that there are actual political parties who believe that. Now, I can understand, I'm not saying UKIP have, UKIP have that, but there are other parties which do. And I can understand them taking them away from, from that type of people, person. Um, but for this, just sake of argument, as far as I understand, one of you, UKIP believe, uh, for example, that you need to assimilate into being an English person because you're in England rather than trying to stay as well, a that's Polish poli person. That, that's political, well, that's kind of political consensus in this country, yeah. Well, in that case, then, if that's the only reason they've taken these children away, then it was pointless, because if you say, especially if you're saying it's political consensus, mm. um, because that's, from what I understand, maybe I don't understand the term multicultural. Well, this is it, isn't it, Tim Lawton? Lott hang on, let's throw this back to the politician, Tim Lawton. It's, it's the definitions of multiculturalism, isn't it? Well, who knows what multiculturalism is? I mean, if, in Trevor Phillips, the head of the Equalities Commission, has uh, exactly has right. poo pooed the whole uh, the whole thing. But uh, what I also take issue with it was a very good point that Janet made earlier. It's about sensitivity to the to the needs. And what I don't agree with is that only a family bit adopting or foster care family who are of the same cultural background of the same religion can provide a suitable um, welfare for those for those children actually you don't need to be of the same uh, religion to respect the needs the cultural sensitivities and backgrounds of those children as was actually it would appear the case um, here it's it's nonsense to say that you could only know what it's like to be a muslim for example and to respect a child's muslim background if it, he or she happened to be muslim if you're muslim uh, you, yourself i don't agree with that and, it, and if we were so constrained in that very few children in this country will get fostered or adopted at all Janet Falls. i agree with that i mean i sit on an adoption panel we have all manner of different people coming forward who are brilliant, are going to be brilliant parents and foster parents, but it, it isn't automatic that they're going to be, that we're going to be placing children of the same ethnicity or, um, you know, background with those people. It, the question is whether or not those people have got the capacity to be able to support the children in developing a positive identity about where they come from. Sorry, can I just say something? Yeah, please. Yeah, go on, Mike. Um, it's just... One of the things which is, I'm hearing about this is uh, they say, you know, uh, um, yeah, a Muslim person or whatever else. Now, I'm not saying that they can't believe that type of thing and be a Muslim person, but aren't they actually English first? Because they're actually here, they're living in England, they're everything else. Um, I don't we go again. get this we go again. idea that people should be, take of argument. Hang on, who's um, saying, hang on, wait a minute, I'm interested in it. Who's saying there you go again? Who is that? You know, dragging this kind of issues constantly. What, what, uh, what issue? It's not going to help the purpose at all, you know. 
Well, what I'm trying to say is, I've lived in other countries. I've lived in America, and I've also lived in Jerusalem. Now, living in Jerusalem, you had people from Russia who only stayed with people from Russia who could only speak Russian, and they couldn't speak Hebrew at all, right? Now, that doesn't let them become a valuable... It really doesn't become a valuable member of the society. It basically becomes that you've got a little country within, within Israel or within wherever it is. So if all you're actually saying is that the people have got to go with their own kind. We cannot change the word. old people. We cannot change the old people, but we can change the generation. You just need to go to ethnic minority schools and see how well, they no, interact no, no. with other children. And how yes, they, they, trying... they are so proud to be British, simply as that. They are so proud to be yes. British. I've met a lot of well, Polish just, children uh, in my local the, the school. Fact, the fact of the matter is... Uh, and they speak more English than their parents. Janet Folds, the fact is, though, you're not going to get any people who are white supremacists in the fostering business, are you? I mean, the Ku Klux Klan are, are, not, are not, you know, big on... On, on, on fostering children from ethnic minorities anyway. So a lot of these the people with the, the views that many would consider as, as vile would um, deselect themselves, wouldn't they? Well, I, in my uh, experience, I think, and particularly in the climate that we're living in, we have to be um, supporting social workers to be rigorous and look at the backgrounds of people because people don't deselect themselves sometimes. Uh, they do continue to want to be getting in touch with children and accessing children for the wrong reasons. You know, Tim Lawton speaks about um, the government's view about protecting children. We need to do more to protect children. We need to support yeah. the workers to protect children. And we need to recognize that some people come into every aspect of life with the wrong motives. So we do need to protect. And, you know, I don't apologize for social workers making careful and uh, sensitive assessments about You're talking people. about something completely different now when you no, said the wrong I, motives from somebody's views on immigration. I think that people come into the work, mm. uh, either the work or into fostering or adoption because they have different motives. We need to know what those motives are. We need to understand them. It doesn't mean that they won't be allowed to do it, but we do yeah. need to understand it. Okay, it's I'm nine, going to key, I'm going to and we're going to have to take the travel. Nine twenty-one. Here's Michelle. This is Five Live Breakfast. Your call. All right, let's bring on Stephen Lester. Um, hello, and uh, are you there? Hello. Good morning. Good morning, and Rob in Cheltenham. Are you there, Rob? Hi there. Good morning. Right. Okay. Good. Um, right, Rob, you go first. Well, I just like to say that I think workers really get quite a rough deal. You know, we, we, we use the one or two limited numbers of incidents to kind of paint a picture of the service, but I had quite a lot to do with uh, social workers and in educa of education. And, uh, the, I mean, they deal with 100,000 cases a year. Uh, that They go into difficult situations. Imagine going onto a challenging housing estate at, uh, late at night in the dark. They're all now because of cuts. I mean, they're, they're doing a job that they're poorly paid for. They're really motivated. Uh, and we should focus on the positive work. That's excellent what they do. It goes on that's unnoticed. I think probably in this case they got it wrong mm. uh, because it, you know, it makes sense, you know, just looking at the facts. They but I, I think they're genuinely meant to do it for the, for the right reason. I don't think they had any themselves. And yes, it needs to be dealt with, but I don't think we need to kind of inflame it. It could just be, um, it just be put right on a local basis. Why are we making such a huge issue? Well, we're making a it? huge First, issue of it because somebody who, who is, um, uh, who are supporters or members of a legitimate mainstream political party, which has uh, currently, according to the polls, you know, one in ten people support and have uh, you know, views that are pretty, pretty mainstream, if we look at polling evidence as well, have been denied the opportunity or they had the initial opportunity and these children were then, after that, taken away from them but because of those views. And that's why many people see this as, as uh, uh, outrageous. Stephen Lester, do you think it's outrageous? Um, I do. I think the first point I'd like to make is, clearly, if the um, foster parents were racist, then they wouldn't have um, entertained taking these children in, in the first place. So That's the self-selecting the they... or self-deselecting point, yes. Well, yes. I mean, the fact that they took them in shows that they care more about the children as individuals rather than a polit political aspiration. I mean, I'm sure many people in this country um, feel strongly about immigration, and certainly we will do when there's no space to stand on other than the bit we're actually standing on. Um, but a political aspiration toward immigration 
by no way um, compares to our feelings towards individuals who are immigrants. There's a whole, a whole paradigm shift between those two um, ideologies. Yeah, uh, lots of people are supporting that issue. Stephen Lester, do you want to come back? Uh, that was me. Uh, I do beg your pardon, I met Robin Shelton. <laughs> Yeah, I, I would agree. I mean, the, the, the people who uh, have been denied their children have proved that they can foster children properly. And I, I, I'm not disagreeing that they got it wrong on this occasion, and people should be quite incensed. But I think it just needs to be dealt with on a, a local level. Uh, Roy, well, Roy and Stevenage, you've got a, a, a you know, you, you have social workers in the family, don't you? Morning, Roy. Good morning, Nicky. Good morning. Yes, um, I do, actually. My sister, she's, um, you, you know, she fosters, and... Um, uh, you know, the main needs are the children, and in, in the Director of Services, she stated herself that all the needs were being met. So where's the argument? Where's the problem? You know, why take the children away when all the needs are being met? And they were in her own words. I, th I think she needs to resign. Well, there are some people who think she was absolutely right, and we're going to be speaking to them after 9.30. We'll take some weather. Uh, we need to know about this. Here's Simon. Yeah, Nikki, the main answer. Uh, Mo Answer. Hi, Mo. Morning, Nikki. Mohammed, now, what, what, why do you, do you, I mean, do you think there's some justification in this decision uh, by the I, social I, services in Rotherham? Yeah, I, I do. I, re I really do. I mean, UKIP have made it a, a core component of their uh, policies. I don't know if they have a technical manifesto, but they've made it a core component that um, they stand against what they term to be multiculturalism. And there have been some anecdotal evidence and some sort of news coming from uh, certain MPs who have made, you know, or, or MEPs who have made very uh, uh, strong comments about their stance on multiculturalism. And for any family who is looking to foster uh, uh, children from uh, uh, outside of the UK who have got specific needs, and this is what we're talking about, the needs of the child. We're putting the children at the heart of the issue. And these children, if they have specific needs around ethnicity or race or religion, then a family who have pretty squarely said, look, we're, we're not in favour of multiculturalism, and I don't believe it can be done in the way that some of the callers have suggested in this tweet. Well, not or... a racist comment you are making. Sorry, beg your pardon? That's a racist comment you are making. <laughs> in, 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 the, in what way is that a racist people comment? People are unable to look after uh, children of colour or of a different religion. It's just completely and utterly untrue. It's you that okay, have the well, racist no, comment. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question, OK? I'm, I'm a Muslim, and God forbid if something happened to my, me and my wife and there were none of our family around to look after my children, and you took them in, would you be able to teach them the Qur'an and the Hadith? Would you be able to teach them the, the, the elements of Islam? Would you be able to teach them how to pray and... How to fast? Abs 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 uh, well, uh, because I'm not a Muslim, the answer to that question is no. But what I would be able to do would be to make contact with other people who were Muslims and ensure that they got that teaching, if that was your wish. And I would right. do and, that because and, and, that was and, the and wish you believe the genuinely. Parents. Okay, and you believe genuinely, firstly, that it's possible. It's just a case of simply making contact with other people who are then going to come in and raise every aspect of your child's upbringing. And secondly. If you were from the English it, 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 it wouldn't be an if ideal situation. If you were from the English League, listen, in the listen, listen. Oh, Wait, 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 wait. The other thing is, the other thing is, uh, Mo, that if you're going to disqualify people from UKIP, we, 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 you would be straying into those on the uh, on a on a certain wing of the Conservative Party, the right wing of the Conservative Party, who would share their views as well. well we, we so, know this. I, no, I so agree. Are you we know this. Uh, so, are you disqualifying Tories from from being fosterers <laughs> as well? No, absolutely but not. But they no, have, no. they have, there's not a cigarette paper between the views of the Tory right and UKIP on, on many well, issues. Nicky, well, well, no, no, well, so, so, so we're knocking we out, to, are we knocking out Tories as well here, or what? No, 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 we're not, but we, we do hear about political tie-up with the Tories and yeah. the UKIP for not competing against each other on, on certain seats right, at the right. minute. I think, I think yeah, what we've said is no agreement is not happening. So this is our new line this morning. Mohammed answer, can Tories foster children? <laughs> Absolutely. I think, I think the, the issue here is that I sit, I sit on a children and young people... It's the same meeting. logic, Mo. Well, no, it's not the same logic, because at the end of the day, you have to give the discretion to the head of children's services or the direct... And I think it's that the lady who's made the decision is the strategic director for children's services. And she and what, made the decision... What, what case by case oh, hang on a minute. Let Mo finish. Hold on, hold on. And now these decisions have to be made on a case-by-case -case basis. And the reason is this, that 
at that local authority, Rotherham are absolutely within their discretion to say that we've assessed these parents and we don't feel, for whatever reason, they are appropriate for raising these particular children. They haven't got a policy that says people are affiliated with Rotherham can be racist, can they? They haven't, made a statement. On this, they, they haven't made a statement saying certain people who are affiliated with certain political, political parties cannot adopt and cannot foster. They haven't said that. That's what exactly they what they've done by their actions. All right, I'll tell you what, I'm going to bring in John in Cumbria because he's a member of UK. Hello, Hello John. Hello there. Yeah, oh, yeah, I mean, oh, no, that was John. I do beg your pardon. I've got so yeah, many no, no, so no, many no, names in front of... Can I make another point? Oh, yes, you can. You this. You, what, about, what about... We don't know in this case yeah. what the political views are of the social workers, the head of social services, the councils. How can they be considered to be independent of making decisions in the best interest of the children? All right, let's have Stephen in Leeds. Have, Stephen... publicly declare their views. Stephen in Leeds, what do you think? This is utter <clears throat> rubbish. This is about what is? giving children love. End the story. Right. Bottom line. Um, UKIP are not a racist party. Uh, they believe in controlled immigration. They do believe in multiculturalism. But they believe that the, uh, the open gate, the open border gate, you've got to control immigration. But this opens a wider spectrum here. Simply because if I didn't believe in gay marriages... If, uh, you know, would I be allowed to foster children? This is their political agenda. People in council, just look at this woman, Joyce um, Thicket, Thacker, I can't remember her name. You look at her, stone-faced. Oh, no you're a bigger bit. Pre- you're a bigger no bit. No humility. So- well. and for what have God, her looks got to do with anything? Well, no, looks haven't got anything to do with anything. anything. Can I just finish here? Could I finish here? Yeah. For Michael Gubb to say that we need people to foster children, he's already wiped out 22% of the adult population because, as you well know, that if you smoke one cigarette a day, you're not allowed to foster a child. It's basically, if you don't all follow their well, agenda... Well, that's going to affect, then, the, sorry, no, that's going to affect the child's, child. child's health, isn't it, with passive smoking? We're not talking about passive politics here. No, We're under this, passive this smoking. Case that if you smoke, no, that's a load of rubbish, Nicky. That is that's a garbage. Just because if you go out into the garden and have one cigarette a day, come on, do me a favour about passive smoking. This is absolute rubbish. And for, for people to regard UKIP as a, as a racist organisation, it is absolutely... I've had dinner with Nigel Farage. This is absolutely an utter disgrace. Cameron started this by calling UKIP a bunch of proof cakes and racist parties the, uh, Cameron is very, borderline very racist worried. Said, yeah. I know Cameron mm. is very worried here it's funny that the Labour Party were the first people to come out in defence of UKIP uh, Cameron has not even come out in defence of this Andrew situation. Nottingham hi Andrew Hello, yeah, I'd just like to say one thing. I mean, if we're looking for uh, people to foster who are absolutely neutral, we're going to be sorely disappointed. But if that's the case, if you're a, a supporter of Labour or a supporter of Tories and take high class emigrated parties, because the Labour Council in Nottingham has taken me off the electoral register for the heinous crime of being English. They won't accept me as English. Now, you as a Scotsman, Nicky, if they said to you in Scotland, uh, we're not going to accept you because you're Scottish. You might think, hang on a minute, this is a bit wrong. But we're ex- expected to accept you. UKIP can be dismissed, but you can't stop this. You're a UKIP member. What about it's, a, it's not a very good line, but you sound pretty angry about something. Listen, we've got Nick in Manchester, and, and he's been Hi. waiting for so long. On you go, Nick. Your time has come. Hi. Yeah, I, thank you. <laughs> I think the, uh, the first point to make is that a lot of social workers don't get credit. They always get, you know... Uh, slags off when something goes wrong. To make the point, firstly, that the uh, social work you've got, you've had on the line earlier, she sounds very good at her job, and I agree with just about everything she says. So that's the first point. Uh, the second point uh, that Amy and I think your Tory MP was going on about, uh, mm. saying that UKIP has been using this for political football, can I point out that UKIP have said that their first concern has been for the uh, couple and the children. Secondly, it's understandable to leak to your own defence if you've been called racist publicly yeah. and by an official. Yeah. And also, it was Rotherham Council and the uh, parents uh, that brought this into the media, not UKIP. UKIP kept quiet. Right. Um, as for the children's needs, uh, the couple were clearly teaching them English 
And uh, also, they were being taught that, that the children's language, uh, yeah. we know that from, from the uh, Daily Telegraph. Um, so, yeah, they, their cultural needs were being considered. Yeah, I mean, the and thing is, Mo so this is it, this is it. People are, either, people are either good foster parents and loving people with good hearts or they're not. It doesn't matter what their views are. Mo, it doesn't Absolutely. matter whether they come from the right or the extreme left. Would you have concerns about somebody from the extreme left? You know, would you want, you know, would you want George Galloway to uh, to foster your children? There we are. You know, there's been lots of people. You know, it doesn't matter, Mo, does it? I, I, I think I, I'm not sure that we can can go to the extremes of the argument. I'm not sure that we can go to the extreme saying it completely doesn't matter, and then go to the other extremes where we say it completely does matter. And then we have to exclude certain people. What we have to allow, we have to, we have to put our faith in the system. Now, I understand no. the system is flawed because we've got disproportionate numbers of black and ethnic minority children. We know in that care. local authorities in, in care, we know that local authorities and central government have failed over successive governments and over successive administrations over decades at reaching out to what we call hard to reach communities. So these are groups who have got um, uh, diverse, who are to come with diverse backgrounds, and who have got. Uh, they need to come forward as fosterers. They need to come forward as adopters. They do need to come no, forward as fosterers. But, 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 Let's but let go on, Mark. The government, government, and local authority have a responsibility also to invest and to reach out. They invest and reach out on other issues. But there's no denying that the government have been absolutely complacent and have fallen short in their responsibility to reach out. Can no, I think you're making a lot of very good, valid points, but. The point is, you a racist organisation. Article 4.2 of their constitution forbids any discrimination on race or ethnic origin, and they do stick to that because they are Julie's, legally bound. Julian Burton on Trent. Hello, ah, 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 Julian Burton on Trent. Good morning, Julie. Hi. How are you? I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm in surprisingly good fettle, you know, for a Monday morning. Oh, good. With it all going off around me. Go on, Julie. Um, Children's needs are actually very, very basic. Uh, they need to be loved. They need to be fed, emptied, watered, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and so whether it's a political view um, of the uh, adoptive parents, assuming that they weren't taking these children along to rallies or meetings that, you know... Um, uh, or reading them the UKIP manifesto as a bedtime story. Yes, that's right. You know, because we let uh, we let Christian people um, foster, and in actual fact, then they are forcing their views on the foster children because invariably they will take them to church. But not if they're anti-gay. Not if they're anti-gay. Sorry. Not not we don't we don't let Christian. There was a Christian couple recently who uh, were were, were uh, uh, not allowed to. Good point. Uh, Good point. Run, their, run their B&B. We had another Christian couple who were not allowed to foster children because they held views that they believed that... Uh, Which were against uh, the mainstream. Yeah. Wrong. yeah, that's yeah. a good point. So, so actually, oh, no, we don't... We, we, this, this fallacy that's been created that, firstly, nobody has said, as far as I'm aware, not even the Prime Minister or anybody else, that UKIP is a racist party. What the local authority have said is that they don't believe the children's best interests are served by this family. Now, maybe they smoke too much, maybe they drink too much, maybe they've got slightly... I hate saying dodgy views because we should have an open, uh, you know, society where we allow people to have different views. However, the, the local authority, we have to trust them to make the decision because they are the ones who have got the children's best interests at heart. And the so uh, making arguments on self-interest, saying, look, well, I, I stand for UKIP and I stand for Englishness and I stand for Britishness. And we, we have to also make a distinction. There, there must be a balancing test to be done between integrating and assimilating. And if we are going to say that all of these children that have come from overseas because of our foreign policy or because of conflicts or because from war zones... Uh, Polish. Or people who yeah. are coming from... E yeah, no, no, I appreciate these yeah. people are from Poland, but also if people are coming from Eastern Europe, the same applies, which is, are we going to force them down a funnel and to forcibly assimilate them into society, which say, you will behave a certain way, or do we need to invest a little bit into looking after their multicultural needs? But as children, as, as young children, they don't have any multicultural needs. They have the needs of somewhere to feel safe. Well, that's assimilation by stealth. That is, that is saying that we don't respect the children's religious per, uh, background or heritage or tradition. No, I'm not or, saying that we don't respect it. I'm saying children do not need to 
even consider whether there's a religious background whilst their basic needs, their needs for love and attention and acceptance are are being dealt with. I've got it. I, I've got it. I don't think there yeah. are such things as Muslim children or Christian children or they're just children. You know, I mean, there's no such thing please. as Muslim children and Christian children. I think that is absolutely absurd. And, and the vast well, majority of people who be. are come from a religious tradition, the vast majority of people who come from religious tradition, I'm sure, raise their children in that same religious tradition. And those children will, uh, whether it's at three or five or ten, they will learn to pray, they will learn the scriptures, they will learn to re- pray. Well, I, don't know. That, I personally think that's wrong. I don't, well, I don't no, yeah, but this, this is what I'm talking about. You, you, are, you are coming from a self-interested position, a dissident well, position, where you are saying, we all? I have these... But, well, not really, because I'm more, I'm more interested in what is in the best interest for those kids. And as somebody, who sits, on a, I, I as somebody think... who sits on a select committee for children's services, in my neck of the woods, and we have responsibility for 1.3 million people in Ant, we're one of the largest local authorities in the country, and our director of children's services stepped in on the baby pee situation. So we, we are very, we, we are looking very keenly at our policies and processes, but I'm not talking as, 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 a, as an official <laughs> member of that, that, that oh. body, but I'm talking as myself. You know, putting the okay, well, let's go. We're going to cut. We're going to cut, gonna cut it there, guys. Uh, oh, because it was very good that you were so exercised that you wanted to get in touch, Mo. Thank you for that, and thank you as well, Julie. We got a quick. Um uh, tweet here on the strength of your show today I would ban anyone who phones into radio phone-ins from fostering uh, it's fi- it's 9.52 Michelle your call it's 9.54 we're going to hear from Damien in London and Richard in Kent first off Damien what would you, what would you like to say to the nation oh thanks yeah, well part <laughs> of the nation they're not all paying attention I can promise you that well we hope so Go on. Uh, well, there's a large, uh, a large chunk. I, I actually have services on this because I actually understand Mr. Cameron made a comment recently about you, which described them being, which uh, you know. So obviously, the social services you're looking over your shoulder at the political classes and what they say, uh, and you take them for telling the truth. Then maybe one would go along that way. The other, um, I, I never take lessons from the right wing about how to bring up children because most of their kids off to boarding school. That's their childcare system, and we historically about boarding schools and the abuse uh, Paul Foot wrote quite eloquently about it um, basically I'll take no lessons about how to bring up children certainly not how to bring up our children mm. R- Richard well I, I just think it's a shame for the children to be quite honest I think they're sort of picking in the middle for things um, I think your researcher said should they go back to the, 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 the UKIP family no they probably shouldn't because it's just taking them out of one environment into another um I think the other caller did make a good point about David Cameron. He called UKIP closet racists. But he also says that a lot of people from the Conservative Party join UKIP. Mm. So then is, he, is he actually saying that his own party is racist and they can't now foster? Mm. I think there's a lot of interested arguments here. There are a lot of interesting arguments. There are, but uh, what about Damon's argument that people on the right wing don't know how to bring up children? Well, bit, uh, I think there's some people on the right wing who probably don't, but there's some people on the left wing that probably don't. <laughs> what we need is a social service to look at people and look at children and put people and children together. In, who I need would, can I say that? I wouldn't disagree with that part. I was just making a point because we were looking at right wing people who seem to be making all the fuss. Yeah, right? yeah. They're the ones who are always sticking their noses in about how other people should bring up. And then when one looks at the way they bring up children, one has to question it quite seriously. It, because well, they don't we've got to be careful of, of, got to be careful of general, generalisations. General uh, yeah, J- Jan in Wales. Hello, Jan. Good morning, Nikki. On you go. Um, I think perhaps we are a little forgetting the children's interests here. We have to put the children's interests first. And I'm sure that the children's authority in question have agonised over this decision. And... We have to trust them that they have made the right decision for the children. I don't have a problem with anybody's political views, although I don't think extreme political views uh, are very good for young children. So ex- such as? It, what, they it depends, them. Well, it depends what you, th- what you consider extreme. It, yes. It depends well, where you are on the spectrum, doesn't it? Can I, can I just say something about the I'm, I'm, very, I'm very sort of, I like to think of myself as liberal-minded and will listen to people's views. But when I say extreme, I mean, I don't know these people. They're probably very good foster parents. But if their views are very extreme, that they could influence the children. 
I'm so sure you're on the liberal. You're on the liberal spectrum, but there will be there are people out there and people listening who think that anyone who thinks that gay marriage is right is extreme, or there are people who are listening who think that anyone who thinks that there should be gay fostering parents or gay adoption parents, whatever the law may be, they think that's an excre- extreme position. So, extremism is, is 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 to an extent in the eye of the beholder, isn't it? Yes, possibly, but. Do you not agree that the authority in question haven't made this decision lightly and they have put the children's interests first, which is quite right, which is what they should have done? Kath, do you, well, let's bring Kath in here. And well, <laughs> Kath in Lancashire, do you think they've put the children's interests first? Um, yeah, I think that social... Because I'm an adoptive parent, and um, I think, yeah, social services, the social work that I've worked with, I've always put, adopted, I've always put the children first. We're always, the, of course, that's the way it should be. And I, and I think they have put the children first, but I think you need to look at it again. What they want for children, young children, is a love and family. And in this country, family, very varied term at the moment, isn't it? Um, people have very different views, um, religious views. Mm. Um, but I think that social, that social services, social workers are there and to put the children first, and that's what they've got to do. There's no room for error, even though there has been, obviously, but there is no room for error in that. They, they, um, yeah, so they've got to... The, the process that you have to go through for fostering, for adoption, is, uh, is, is you know, so in-depth, um, that, and then more things are coming into it, more hurdles that you've got to jump over every time. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've been, I've been through the process twice now, and the third time ne- nearly done. And um, it does, it is getting more difficult, more tight. They do go more into your views. and. So ultimately, if you've been vetted, if you've been okayed as, a, as an adopter or as a potential fosterer, you, we, we've got to have faith that you're going to be okay at whatever your political views, because you've got through the basic requirements, which are that you're going to love children, you're going to care for children, you're going to look after children, you're going to foster children with, with, with all those factors involved. One would have thought, one would have hoped. Listen, thank you all so much for the contributions uh, this morning for a Monday morning. I'm sure this one will go on there, reading the report, which has just landed on the, the desk there in Rotherham, and I'm sure we'll get some reactions to it throughout the day, right here on...